On today's show, we're going to take a look at the results of printing the two Spider-Men in Cura. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we are today diving into the final chapter on our Cura adventure on 3. Point, or yeah, 3.4.1. And we printed off two different Spider-Man models. They're the exact same model. We printed them with different settings. As you know, on Friday last week, we discussed setting up Cura for the Ender 3 and using the CR10 profile as our base. On Monday, we did some tweaks and we printed off another one of the busts uh, that you see here on the table. And we're going to talk about the differences that it made, if it made any. And uh, we'll take you all the way through that. So let's head over to the computer and take a look at the different Spider-Man models that we have. Okay, so we're over here at the computer and we can see we've got the first of the two Spider-Men uh, on the C or pardon me on the screen now. And you can see on this one we had some line uh, over extrusion. It didn't move, it just over extruded a little bit. And we can see it here prominently down in the, the very bottom. We can't really see it much in the lettering there, although there is a little bit. Uh, and admittedly, I haven't cleaned up this model uh, completely. So we can see it up here in the chest. So on these flatter areas, we can see it more so than we can see it down in the base. We can also see it across the eyes and the mask uh, and that sort of thing. So this was the one that we did when we first did our setup in Cura. Now this is the second one. And with the settings that we did, did it make it better? I don't think so because we have the exact same, even though more prominent, um, aberrations in the print. We can see them, they're a little bit more pronounced on this particular print. And this is the second one after we use SandTube's uh, upgrades. Now, part of this could be due to the fact that we were using a TL smoother on the extruder. Now, I know some of you are going to say a TL. A TL smoother on, on the extruder is not necessary, and you're absolutely right about that. I have been playing around with TL smoothers on the Ender 3 for the last little while, and some prints come out great, some prints not so much. So what I did yesterday is I took that TL smoother off, and it is now printing something else. And we'll see how smooth that surface comes out. So far, it looks fine. Now let's uh, take a look at a couple of more of these, these images. Now, if we look up here, we can see that there was a little bit of, of angel hair that happened. This, again, is the second print. Um, so it had a little tiny bit of stringing, not very much. Um, so now we go back to the, the first one that we printed. We see right here, we zoom in. Oh, I guess I can't zoom in. I thought I could zoom in. We can see right here we've got a little bit of a hole. Um, in the print. So let's uh, go to the next one and we can again we can see those aberrations. Now this again is the first print and this is the second print. We can see they're in the exact same place. Now I do believe this had something to do with the TL smoother, not necessarily the settings in Cura. We see the first one here you can see the lines a lot closer you can see there's little areas where there's a little bit of under extrusion. I think that's from the start and stop points more so than anything else. And here we see the um, first one. Oh, pardon me. This was the second one. This is the first one. So again, those lines are in the exact same spots. And here's a close-up. We can see there's a lot of under extrusion from the start and the stops right in these areas. And you can see all these little holes will all have to be filled in. Now, is this a horrible print? No, not at all. This one is a lot better with our original settings. Certainly, it's a lot smoother. 
Um, and I think that with a little bit of sanding, which is not a lot of a lot of trouble, a little bit of sanding will take those lines right down. You'll never even notice that they were there. Uh, again, we see here on the second print, there's a lot of starting and stopping gaps um, in the print. And back to the first one, those gaps are not there. On the bottom, this is a telltale sign. Now, this is the first one we printed. We can see that it looked like it, it did one area and then it changed direction and it started going in a circle. So that was kind of strange to me. The bottom on this, on the first one is not that great. On the second one, we do have a much better bottom. It's a lot more defined. Um, the lines are going in the exact same direction. It did not over extrude as much as I wanted it to and that's a telltale sign of of the gaps that we're seeing. Um, and this could also be um, that my nozzle is a little too far away from the bed as well. That's a, a good indicator of that. Again, we look at the, the first one and now let's have a look at the backs. Now this is the first one here that we printed, the one that I've got my mouse on now. And the back looks actually quite nice. A little close, a little cleaner picture of it. We go over to the other one, uh, the second one we printed, and we can see a lot more aberrations in the back. Not that you're going to see the back anyway, but um, it does tell us a story. So we're taking the TL smoother off. We are going to continue to utilize that Cura setting for a little while, just to see uh, if there's any improvement because the TL Smoother is off. Um, we'll show you the results on an upcoming show. I am also going to do this again, comparing two models, one sliced in Cura and one sliced in um, Simplify 3D. And we'll talk about that on an upcoming show. So let's head back over to the table and we'll wrap this up. Well, there you have it, the results are in. Did it really make much of a difference? I think the first one uh, as far as layers go, came out better. The second one, not so much. Um, I think uh, there's a little bit of refining to do on the sand tube settings, um, but the bottom came out much better on the second one. Uh, again, I took off that TL smoother, which is right here. This is a TL smoother. We'll just go to the upper camera here for a second. So this is a TL smoother. Basically what how this works is your um, your line to your stepper motor will plug into one side and this will plug into your board and you can see that it has eight diodes on it uh, we have taken this TL smoother off the extruder uh, I don't think that we needed one in the first place but I was you know doing some testing so you guys don't have to now uh, is this making a difference I can see on the prints that are in there right now that is certainly making a huge difference so I can see that it's making a big difference on the flat surfaces of the prints that we're doing right now. Uh, this is for a future episode that we're going to be doing uh, with you guys. I am going to take two models again and, and print them both, one using the Cura settings and one using Simplify 3D. And we're going to compare the times, we're going to compare the, the actual prints, and we'll show you guys exactly how that all comes out. <clears throat> and we'll see which one is a better software for you um, at that point but right now if you're using cura 3.4.1 i know the beta just dropped for 3.5 um, i'm going to recommend that you don't download the beta unless you're somebody who understands how to use beta software stick with 3.4.1 for now and uh, you will uh, you'll be just fine if you're using cura now, with that said, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. As always, I do apologize again for Wednesday's live stream. We had some technical difficulties. It caused us to go down, and uh, so that's why you're getting Wednesday's show today. Um, I'm going to quickly go through some of the questions that came in. Um, let me just open up my Facebook here, and we will get into that. Here we go. There we go. Facebook. And I'm going to answer some of the questions that came in uh, on this particular subject. 
People were having issues, um, and I get that. There we go. Let's uh, open that one. All right. Nope, open the wrong one. That's the one I want to open right there. So let's go down to that post and we will uh, we'll take a look at some of the the successes. Now, some of you had great success. Some of you didn't have so much success. Um, David uh, Patzel did a great job. He said with the settings, his came out beautifully. He uh, he brought it down to 70% scale. Um, no supports. Got it down to just over two hours print time. Bottom of the base. Missed a couple of extrusions while it was baby stepping um, the first layer, but he did a, a very good job. Uh, we are going to talk about baby stepping in an upcoming uh, episode as well, but let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Here we go. It's all in this one. So we want to see the comments in this one. I don't want to see me. I want to see the comments. Come on. There we go. Sometimes my fat fingers don't work. All right. So uh, Fred Kaz uh, is asking if we can print models the same in Cura and the same in uh, S3D. And we talked a little bit about that. Um, Jim McGregor wants to know, would these settings also apply to the Creality 10 printer? And yes, they would. You'd just have to change the bed size. Uh, Kelly uh, Panasic um, had, had an attempt, and you can find all of these, these uh, pictures up on our Facebook page um, under the, the uh, episode that we did on uh, last Friday. Um, he said he had some, some aberrations, much like we had on the fronts, um, and uh, he wants to know how to fix them. We are going to, to fix that as well. Uh, Jim McGregor says uh, the base didn't come out so hot, but everything else was pretty good. Uh, ben Brady had uh, a good success. Jim McGregor, Spidey came out really, really well. Just having a quick peek at it. Yeah, it came out really nice. A little bit of uh, nice and smooth. He had a little bit of support under the chin as we did with these ones. Um, and it looks great. Kelly's second one turned out really good. And uh, Jerry Knapp had a really good one. So do we want to talk more about Cura? We are going to do that. We're going to refine it a little bit more in, uh, in future episodes. But for now, we are done with Cura for the next few episodes. We are going to get ready to do our Halloween episode coming up pretty soon. Uh, and that's what's printing over here. I'm not going to tell you about that. i got a lot of stuff printing at home as well. And uh, we're going to get back to fixing up a few other issues uh, that we're having uh, maybe with our prints or maybe finishing. So until I see you guys next time, let's thank, of course, our amazing staff, Brian Baker, who is getting his tonsils out. We all wish him well. Um, Frank Awesome and always the lovely Jess Corniching and of course my lovely wife Geraldine. And uh, these guys work tirelessly behind the scenes to help me bring the show to you guys so that you guys get the best information I can possibly give you. Now, I don't know everything, but I learn so that you guys don't have to. Now, with that said, let's uh, thank a few people. First and foremost, I want to thank my Patreons for helping to support this show and helping us to get up and running. As you know, uh, through your support, we were able to uh, put a new PC into the studio, um, and it is working perfectly. Um, so thank you again to all of my Patreons. If you want to become a Patreon, you can also go up to patreon.com, sign up for one of the levels there, and uh, we'll be showing you some amazing stuff coming up really soon. Um, by going to patreon.com slash the first layer. Now, if you're not interested in a monthly commitment, and I know times are tough and not everybody can, uh, can afford that, well, you can always go to buy me a coffee if you want to show your support or just keep coming back here and supporting the show. Um, by going to buymeacoffee.com. We all love coffee here. Everybody does. So uh, everybody can enjoy a, a cup once in a while. 
With that said, I want to thank also Spool 3D. Without them, we wouldn't have this studio uh, and access to all the printers that we can bring you guys uh, and show you and filaments and things like that. So listen, if you're interested in getting into 3D printing or just looking at maybe upgrading your first printer, Spool3D.ca has everything that you need from printers to filaments to all the parts and accessories you could possibly hope for for your next 3D printing project. So check them out today at Spool3D.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool3D. Thank you again for joining me. Listen, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that little bell notification and also hit the thumbs up if you liked today's episode. If you didn't like today's episode, you can give it a thumbs down. That's okay. Leave your comments down below and uh, I do read the comments all the time. I don't get a chance to answer most of them uh, as often as I'd like to, but I'm trying to get to the backlog now. Uh, I do try and answer them as best that I can. And if you have a, a question that you'd like to send in to me, uh, you don't want to put it in, in comments or you don't want to put it over on our Facebook page, you can always send it to me at richard at thefirstlayer.com. So until next time, my friends, we'll see you on Monday where we're going to start comparing different filaments and we're going to talk to you about the different temperatures and how those filaments work. So until Monday, have yourselves a great weekend. And remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.